Brad Marchand remains quite upset about the NHL pulling out of the Olympics, and our Boston Bruins are getting ready to return to action against the Buffalo Sabres on Saturday, January 21st. Going to talk about that and a lot more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Wednesday, December 29th, and our Bruins are practicing in advance of their next game against Buffalo on Saturday, January 1st, in what is shaping up to be a very busy 2022. I believe Brandon Carlo is back at practice this morning. Charlie Coyle, the only Bruin remaining on the COVID list, which is very encouraging. Now, before we get into uh, all that, I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen of the day in 2021. Tremendous growth for the podcast this year, and I'm very excited about 2022. Hopefully, we can continue to, to grow. So if you haven't already, please subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Each new episode will be automatically added to your feed free to download, listen, and enjoy. And uh, tell a friend, family member, the Bruins loving person in your life about the podcast. Uh, If uh, you're more of a video person, you can watch the podcast episodes on YouTube. Just search up Locked On Bruins and you can get it there. I also share the episodes on uh, social media. So you can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets at Ian. C. McLaren. Uh, So I talked yesterday about how Brad Marchand was quite upset about the decision not to go to the Olympics. Uh, He mentioned earlier this week that it should be up to the players to go and that, uh, you know, just very disappointing that he is not able to uh, represent his country at the Olympic games, which he has not had an opportunity uh, to do. He's played at uh, the world cup and uh, you know, he's represented Canada in the past, but not at the Olympic games. This likely would have been his last opportunity to do so. He's been one of the best left wingers in the game uh, for years. Uh, But by the time 2026 rolls around, Brad Marchand will be up there in age 37, you know, an outside chance that he could be there, but I don't know, probably, probably not. Um, So Brad Marchand on Tuesday took to Twitter and kind of reiterated his point about uh, it should be up to the players whether or not they can go to the Olympics, an individual decision. This comes on the heels of the NHL not only postponing games due to COVID-19 outbreaks, but also preemptively postponing games north of the border because there are going to be capacity restrictions in rinks up here in Canada. Already at the World Juniors, you see half uh, full arenas. Montreal, before the break, played in an empty arena. Uh, Last night here in Toronto, uh, the Toronto Raptors played in front of 9,000 people. Uh, So they're putting these... Um, protocols in place, not only to prevent COVID outbreaks, but also to just try to save or recoup as much um, revenue as possible, which, you know, I guess that's fair for the owners. Uh, But here's what Brad Marchand's argument was. He went to Twitter and said, the NHL and NHLPA can change the rules of the CBA to add a taxi squad so they don't miss any games and don't lose any money. That has been agreed upon that the players will pay back an escrow until the owners are made whole from what they have lost during the pandemic, regardless of how many games are missed. Yet they can't do a taxi squad during the Olympics so they can honor the agreement they made so the NHL players can go. Please tell me that's not bullshit. 
And for all of you who want to pipe back about forfeiting pay while being gone, yeah, not a problem. Let the players make their choice. So here's the situation. Uh, the NHL recently announced that taxi squads will be brought back, meaning uh, each team will have a pool of players they can draw from, called up from the AHL to step in um, and fill vacancies in the lineup caused by uh, COVID-19. Uh, when the players and the owners agreed to do the bubble tournament in Edmonton and Toronto uh, back in 2020, part of that was an agreement put in place that NHL players could go to the Olympics in 2022. Uh, the players agreed to play to get some of that TV money rolling in so that the owners could be made whole. Part of their salary is set aside in order to do that. And, um, you know, agreeing to play in empty arenas in those bubble situations was tough on the players. Not easy, you know, to be away from their families, mental health, to be kind of sequestered in that way. But they did it because in part of the provision that they could go to the Olympics. Now they're saying that's not going to happen. And... Marshan's argument here is that if taxi squads can be used to recoup revenue for the owners to not miss NHL games, then these taxi squads should be used to fill rosters so that players who want to go to the Olympics could be going. So, for example, when it comes to the Bruins, say Bergeron, Marshan, Pasternak, McAvoy, uh, wanted to go to the Olympics. Let's use those four guys in, as, a, as an example. Uh, Marchand is basically saying the Bruins should be able to have Jack Stanika, Oscar Steen, say Jesper Froden, Jack Ashan called up to fill their spots, and the games can go on in their absence. Obviously, it's an inferior product for the NHL to have all the best players or some of the best players, those that want to go, uh, missing from the NHL rosters and would fans want to come pay to see these kind of AHL teams? Probably not. That's what the counter argument would be. Uh, but Marshan's point stands that if they're willing to do whatever it takes to keep um, the schedule intact and play an 82 game season, just let that happen and let players who want to go to the Olympics, do so. And if it means forfeiting pay, he, for one, is more than willing uh, to do so. Obviously, it's a moot point because, yeah, the option is not on the table, but Brad Marchand has become one of the more outspoken players when it comes to this decision not to go to the Olympics. Patrice Bergeron also said he's disappointed. Steven Stamko said he would have gone. Uh, so Marchand's not alone in this, but... Definitely one of the more outspoken guys uh, when it comes to this decision. And again, it could have involved if Marchand or Bergeron or whoever got COVID over there, they'd have to stay there for three to five weeks in quarantine. So it's not just the taxi squads uh, during that time, but also filling those holes for perhaps an additional month when they're in quarantine still back in China, which is not ideal. So I can see kind of both sides of the argument. Definitely disappointing for Marchand personally. Uh, and uh, hopefully there's another World Cup perhaps to make up for it, but obviously not the same as the Olympics. Now, the new year is almost upon us, and that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. It's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it, unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill. You want to eat healthy, it just gets so boring. By like week three, you might be thinking, this is just not worth it. Where's the chocolate? They're covered in 100% chocolate, and they also have about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein. If you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way, when you enjoy a delicious built bar, you can almost count it as a workout. There's so many flavors to choose from. 
And uh, they're always coming out with new limited time flavors as well. So check out build.com often to see what's new. Go to build.com, use promo code uh, LOCKED15 and get 15% of your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Uh, you won't regret it. They're really, really good. Now, during the World Junior Tournament, uh, you can check out the Locked On NHL podcast and get bonus World Junior Hockey coverage from Tyler Cool of Locked On Capital. Subscribe to Locked On NHL on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Thank you again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen. For your next listen, go check that out for sure. Mm. Excuse me while I have a swig of my caramel macchiato. Now, the Bruins, like I said, back at practice. Uh, Taylor Hall met with the media on Tuesday to talk about uh, his COVID absence and what he's looking to do when he gets back on the ice. He's been admittedly mired in a bit of a slow s- start to the season. Um and really looking to make some adjustments when the season resumes to put a greater focus on shooting the puck. He said he always wants to be a player that's open, have good timing to be open for passes, always be a guy that when McAvoy or Grizzlick and all those guys are on the ice, they see him open, want to pass to him right away. He said, if I would say anything, He's gotten a little bit pass heavy this season on rushes, on two on ones, that type of thing. Hall is on pace for 205 shots uh, over 82 games, which would be the fewest of any full season during his 12 year career. He said he needs to work it on practice, make it habitual to be more of a driver with shots to the net, plays to the net, taking the puck himself to the net. Those are little things over the course of 10 days, your mind always drifts back to hockey, what you can do better. You know, that's what he was thinking about when he was out with uh, COVID. Something he's trying to work on and get into his game a lot more over the course of the rest of the season. Uh, The former Hart Trophy winner has scored on just five of his 65 shots. That's a career low 7.7 shooting percentage. So, If he has more of a shoot mentality coupled with, you know, his shooting percentage regressing more closer to his career mark, uh, then that should bode well for the Boston Bruins getting some increased secondary scoring. His career shooting percentage is 10.1%. When he had the eight goals last season for the Bruins in 16 games, it was up to 16.7%. So something in the middle there would be just fine for the Bruins. And hopefully Hall can take this shoot mentality and uh, bring it to the game action. Now, Bruce Cassidy said for Hall, it's partly due to who he's been playing with, kind of bouncing around with line mates, who he's best suited with. Finding the right centerman is important for him. But at the end of the day, he's got to play his game no matter who's in the middle of the ice with him find ways to attack and generate a little more five on five play contributed on the power of play, but it's that five on five secondary stuff. The Bruins could use out of him uh, for sure. Uh, There has been some concern about David Pasternak. He is uh, yeah. Suffered from some real bad puck luck so far this season. So many posts he is getting, uh, shots on net he's projected to record 363 shots over the course of a full 82 game season and um you know that would be very uh, very high production for him let's be honest Pasternak let's see what his previous career high in uh shots was Basically, if he keeps shooting as he has, it's just bound to go in at some point. He's already got 115 shots on goal through 26 games. His previous career high is 279, and that's when he scored 48 goals a couple of seasons ago. Shooting percentage right now is 7%. His career average is 
around 14. So, yeah, he should be closer to 15, 16 goals at this point in the season if he was shooting uh, the same amount, but if it was going in at the same regularity. So, um, yeah, if those two can get going, certainly be a bonus for the Boston Bruins. Now, uh, another Tuka Rask update. Uh, he said, or sorry, Bruce Cassidy said there have been preliminary discussions about when Tuka returns to the Bruins and whether he would need some time in Providence to knock off the rust. Um, that's something that will have to be worked out with general manager Don Sweeney practicing with the Bruins and maybe getting some games in when the Bruins go on the road from January 8th to 12th. Cassidy said his guess is Tuka will probably go to Providence that week because you just don't have a lot of work to give him. Um, so yeah, things are trucking along with Tuka Rask. I see some people on social media wondering how it is that the Bruins can get away with this, but it's kind of just Rask practicing at his own risk. There's really no um, insurance there. He doesn't have any assurances of a deal, uh, but it's kind of just this uh, underlying um, agreement that, that he can be there as an emergency backup goalie technically. And uh, yeah, we'll see if he gets back in the lineup anytime soon. Now, a couple COVID related updates. Uh, the Bruins, Canadians game that was scheduled for January 12th in Montreal will now be played at TD Garden. Uh, actually, sorry, this was a game that was scheduled at TD Garden for March 21st, will now be played on January 12th. Uh, that is to accommodate a game that was supposed to be played in Montreal. They're now just pushing it to the Garden. That goes back to those kind of capacity lim limits that I mentioned uh, in relation to games up here in Canada. Elliot Friedman this morning tweeting that uh, the NHL and the PA looking to go towards the CDC guidelines, which uh, has an isolation day uh, period of five days instead of 10 days for asymptomatic players. Not sure if that will fly up here in Canada either, but uh, it's something that they are certainly uh, going for. All right, let's finish with some news and notes from around the NHL. Before we do that, quick reminder to check out the Locked On Bets podcast. Uh, they are your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. It's free and available on all platforms. There are some rumblings that, um, now take this with a grain of salt, it comes from Boston Hockey Now, uh, looking at some possible trade targets for the Bruins. Could they be looking at Phil Kessel as an option to replace Jake DeBrusque? Uh, the 34-year-old has put up decent stats on a bad Coyotes team and could provide the Bruins with middle six scoring they need. Uh, the Coyotes would certainly have to uh, retain a chunk of Kessel's uh, contract. Uh, but I actually would love to see uh, uh, Phil Kessel back in black and gold. I, I've... I've mentioned that before, uh, as long as they can get him for cheap and as long as they can, uh, or the Coyotes retain some salary for sure. That would be, that would be great. Um, uh, Kessel speaking of which he had four points for the Coyotes last night, uh, as did Lawson Krause and then eight, seven loss to the, uh, San Jose Sharks, the highest scoring game of this season, uh, so far. Uh, going back to the um, Olympic thing with Brad Marchand to bring this episode full circle, Blues winger Vladimir Tarasenko expressed his unhappiness over the league's decision. He said it's every Russian's dream to play for the national team. And he mentioned that he read uh, and agreed with Brad Marchand. Uh, doesn't really understand the point when people are deciding for you. You'd be surprised how many people would choose to go, he said. Anyways, that is it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. I just got my booster today, so I'm going to go take it easy for the rest of the day. And uh, yeah, I hope you're all doing well, enjoying the holiday break. For those of you back at work, hope things are okay there. 
And uh, I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of Locked On Boston Bruins here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.